Hey, what's up? This is Paul Stolt from Super Easy Apps. Welcome back. I'm just recovering from some back pain from a terrible accident shoveling snow. I, I pulled my back when I hit the curb with the shovel and I've been like out of commission. So this is the first time I'm standing again recording the last two videos I did sitting down and it's been a little bit painful at times, but I've been doing a lot of PT. All right, so in this video, I wanna get into something that has been mind blowing with Sketch. And this is something that I hadn't done before and it simplifies so many things and it, it really helps me streamline a lot of things that I was doing manually in the past. And I'm so excited that I found it. I wanted to show it off to you so that you can sort of see a high level. So this is my current like mock-up document right now. It's a mess but it's a mock-up document for how the app should look for different themes. I've got three theme concepts that I'm sort of working off of, and I've got this sort of vivid light, I've got a vivid dark theme, and then I've got this sort of charcoal, ultra low contrast theme for people who want sort of a, a different style on things. And so this has been a lot of iterations. You can see I've got a lot of different versions of the timer, different coloring, different styles. I've got all of the theme colors sort of marked out with the, the hex codes. And then I finalized on the font. For a long time, we, we thought that we would, we started with Helvetica and that like changed things. Um, but the hardest thing has always been the icon design. And this is where you really have to lock it down. And so I wanna go into what we've been doing for that. So the, the final prototypes and everything is this stuff right here. And then this down here, everything else was sort of just prototyping and sort of screenshots of the app in progress and stuff like that. And what I wanna show is how we're working with these icons. So these icons are designed to be a specific size. And in the past, I would make it so that they were exportable at that size using artboards and that worked great. The problem is when you want to put them into a design, the artboard doesn't really work well and you really need a symbol in order to place it correctly and know the spacing. And so when you're going from design to Xcode, it's really helpful to know how much space is in between these elements. So if I've got fixed sort of width icons, I wanna make sure that the spacing I can match in Xcode. And so one of the things that I had to do, and this is annoying because Mac storyboards do not support Zoom. So it's really hard to see. You have to actually use the, the control key to zoom in with accessibility if you wanna zoom in. But anyway, so the trick here is you design the assets, then you can recolor them if they're symbols and there's all these overrides that I just learned about that are so awesome. Plus using this new technique, you can have this proper size and uh, these are, you can see they're not actually artboards and said what they are, are symbols. So let's click on one. I'll just double click on this one. This takes me to my symbols page, which is right here. And I've sort of organized this. There's all kinds of symbols in here, but these are the button icons that we're working with. And what I've done is you can see that there's a symbol for the color that's masking over the actual shape. And that makes it really easy to change the color. And the other thing that you don't see is there's this invisible border. And what I didn't realize, and I saw some other people doing this, is that the invisible border solves my problem for placement. I don't now have to export a symbol and then re-import it. That was like a total waste of time. Uh, what I can do now is I can just use a symbol. And as long as I have this border, what the border does is it gives me a defined margin on either side. And depending on the graphic, you might go up and to the margin or you might not. And so this gives you that consistency in the size of the shape. So if we look at something like this one, we can turn on the border and you can see that that border is just gonna give me the extent of how big this object is. Otherwise, our symbol would just be the icon itself, which isn't good for placement because when we work with buttons, we tend to wanna have a bigger tap target. And so for a typical button on iOS, you'd want a 40 by 40 sort of button size. Your graphic might not be that big, but you want to have margins around it. And so this allows you to at least set up consistency on your icons. So one of the things I had to do is I had to determine how big do I want these icons. And so for the app over here on the left, you can see I've got a five point spacing in between. And since I'm on a, a non-retina display, that's just gonna be five pixels. But if I move it over to my, my laptop over on my left, then it would be 10 pixels because it's a retina screen. And depending on the font scaling, that might vary, but I think I've got it at just a 2X resolution right now. All right, so 
Here's the app. You can just start it up. It starts this countdown timer. It's super convenient. I can just type 20 minutes. So my PT person told me like, I need to work for 45 minutes and then I need to take a break. Then I need to stretch. I need to stand. I need to move. I can't just be static. So the, the timer is great for something like that. We have different theme colors. So I had to figure out colors for that. And what was really cool is with these symbols. So if I double click on this again, I've, I've actually added these borders. So we want to turn those off because we don't want to export with the border. We just need that there as sort of a placeholder for the space itself. And that'll give us the extent, which is really handy for giving us the sort of the bounding box. And then what I've also done here is I've got this extra mask layer. So let's just take a look at this play button. If I turn off the mask uh, layer that's being masked or the, the color that's being masked, we can see that this is sort of the default color. And by turning this on, we can restyle it. Now, we just need to have one of these tiles, and I have a bunch of theme tiles set up for the different font sizes. So these are already symbols, and I just drag those in on top. And if we just turn this off, so it's ignoring the underlying mask, and I think I have to turn off the mask here, so that will just disable masking. All right, so the way masking works, and this is kind of backwards, I, it feels backwards to me at least, is the, the top layer is gonna be the color, and then you're gonna have your cutout, and you take the bottom layer and you mask on top. So if we turn off this, we can see that those are our two layers for the play button. Let's just zoom in on this. And that was the wrong button. Okay, so command two to zoom in. And what I do is I think I just do mask here. And no, I think maybe you do mask here. Oh, it's got this ignore on. So you gotta be careful with that setting because that will cause it not to work. So let's just turn off the mask again, just so you can see how this works. So if I right click and say mask, you have to do this on the lower layer, then it will assume the color above. Now what's cool is that this is kind of like a placeholder. And so this is a color that is set, but there's a way to override that now in sketch. And I didn't know about this until recently. And so what I can do is now that I've got the symbol set up, I can create duplicates of the symbol and then I can rename uh, those, those duplicates. So if I just duplicate the symbol holding the alt key, then what I can do is if I did that right, we actually click on the symbol itself, not the um, not the artboard around it. So actually, I think I misspoke. These are artboards, and I've I've made them so that they're they should be exportable because that's how I've or no, I've just been exporting the symbols directly. Actually, that's how I've been doing it. But what I want to show is now there's this override thing. So if I need a different color symbol, that's really hard to see, but we can go in and we can change these to different color, different overrides. So if you've already defined the different styles of color that are going to be in your application, then it's really easy to set up all my dark theme buttons because I can just go for the dark theme and then I had this as the button color. And so I could just do that and it gives me all of the button colors that I need. So super useful. And then on those artboards that I have here, I can just rename them Play Mini Dash Dark or just uh, Play Mini for the non-dark version. And then in Xcode, what I've done is I've imported all of these symbols. And so we've set this up. And since this is a Mac app, uh, there's only gonna be a one X and a two X, which is super useful. You can change this so that it, it doesn't do universal, but that was causing a lot of, I had to do that for each one. So I didn't bother doing it. I was like, screw that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's good enough. And then we're using Theme Kit, which has been really interesting. And in Theme Kit, that allows us to register different things. And if I can find this stuff, got a lot of things in here. Theme. So here we we sort of set up all of the the potential things that get set. And so we've got a large version and a small version of our icons, and then they're themed appropriately. So in Sketch, you can see that we've got both a dark and a light theme icon. And then in Xcode, we've got all of these set up as sort of named parameters with ThemeKit. Now, the one thing that you have to make sure that if you use ThemeKit on a Mac app is you need this little flag, otherwise the function does not work. And we were totally at a loss with that one. And then with our themes, we just provide some overrides for the colors and for the, the themes themselves, there should be somewhere in here. I think that's in our constants file uh, that we define 
Oh no, it's right down here, yeah. So it's pulling in all our constants. So you can see all the images for the light theme get set up here, and then the dark theme, and then the charcoal theme get set up in here. And so that sets them all up. These all, if I just jump to the definition of one of these symbols, if that works, these are just the names themselves. So we just created some constants for these values so that we can just reuse them. And so we're just importing. And so what that allows us to do is then if I go into preferences for the super easy timer, we now have the ability uh, down here to choose different modes. And so this is the dark mode and the charcoal, and it will actually uh, change all of the NS view properties and colors for that. Now we did run into the issue where it didn't work with like the layers themselves, but if we're just working with the NS view and boxes, it does work and the fonts and all that stuff. So super useful. And you can see that the, the icons themselves automatically update appropriately. We've got the large mode, which has the other icons. And so just switching between these two, it will show the appropriate icon. So that is the, the super easy timer. That's how we're leveraging this feature in Sketch to do exporting. It's really useful to set up these borders and you can create any kind of symbol. So just to go through those steps one more time, what I would do if I was creating a new symbol is I'd create an artboard. Let's say it needs to be 12 by 12. So I'd drag out a 12 by 12, which is the icon size I'm using. And let's just insert some kind of shape and what's an interesting shape. I'm gonna go with the star. Now this is gonna be really tiny, but we'll put it in there and we'll turn off the border color. And then now alignment can get a little tricky when you're working this small. I can switch to the pixel mode and you'll see that these things are really pixelated, but they will export at the 2X or 3X resolutions for iPhone or iPad or or Mac, whatever you're doing. And you can see that's sort of how it's gonna look pixelated. So this is a really small icon. So when you're working with really tiny icons like this, it's helpful to know how the shape's gonna look and to sort of get it looking good. So it doesn't look like much, but if we were to zoom out then, it should look more like a star. And so that looks pretty good. And then if I were to export that, that would look better. But let's just zoom in on that again. And what I would do is I'd turn this star into, so we've got this artboard here. What I would do is I'd, I'd also want that rectangle. So I'd drag out a rectangle for the border and we'll just do a, a color. That's gonna be our border. Put that below, oops that below and still inside the artboard. And uh, we're going to make that invisible, but we're going to make this a symbol. So we'll select both of these, create symbol, and we'll just say this is going to be our star symbol. That puts it on our thing. So if we double click it, it takes us to our symbols page. Now, it should put them somewhat close to where the other ones are, but it's, it's a little bit down here. So now what we want to do is we want to hide the border that's just sort of a placeholder for the space. And for this, this shape, it's gonna be taking up sort of the full extent. Uh, but if you had something like the pause button, I don't fill the whole thing. So having that rectangle is really important for placement because it gives us that consistent size. Once we do that, the next step was to grab one of those colors. And so we wanna insert a symbol for that. And so if you've named these correctly, you now have this nice with this slash sort of syntax, we can go for a dark theme and we can go for the button color, which is what this is. We just place this here. Now we're gonna have to resize this because this color swatch is really big compared to how tiny this 12 by 12 is. We place that there, put that above the star, and then we just ask the star to mask it. And now we have this color mask. So now we're done with our symbol. And if you've done this correctly, you should see that this arrow goes down. Just double check, don't have this checked for ignore the underlying mask because that will cause issues and then have your border disabled. And then if we return to instance, or we just go back to page one, you should find your star. And what you can do is we can duplicate the star and then let's create one of these to use the light theme. So this is the dark theme button. So we can set up one to use my light theme and I'm um, having trouble reading, light theme button color right here. 
So that will shift that color. And then this one just needs to be the dark theme button color. And it's already set to that. So now I have the two versions and then I can click on my artboard for the shape itself. Let's see, how did I do this? Now it does look like I'm exporting the artboard. I don't know why this didn't show up. So this is the export panel. And so what I would do here, I am gonna rename the artboard. So for the copy, let's call this one the star dark. And then we've got our star. And with that, we're pretty much good to go to export both of these. So I'll just select both of these artboards and I'll make them exportable. And since I'm doing a Mac app, I just need two versions. I can go for the 1X and the 2X, and I'll do both PNG. You could also do vector. I had some issues with vectors. Um, I'm, I'm trying to iron out like what's going on with that. And uh, then all we need to do is select these artboards. When we do that, it will select both of them. If you see both of the, the artboards here, you can then click on export two artboards over on the right, and then it will save them somewhere. So I'll save them onto my desktop export them. And if we look on my desktop, probably have a lot of things there. We shall see the star and you can see the 2x and the 1x version. And on a retina screen, if I were to look at this, they would probably look the same if you're toggling between them, but you would notice one looks sharper. Uh, on a non retina screen, which is what I'm on right now recording, it's not going to look retina. All right, so that's sort of the difference that you would see. And I think holding Alt will show you the pixels. So if you hold Alt, that one doesn't do anything. It just did it. I guess you have to have it open up recently and have focus or something. Oh, it's a little glitchy. But we can see how that looks as well. All right, so that's the star. That's how to, to work with Sketch. That's the new workflow that I'm doing for our icons. It vastly simplifies, and the, the reason I bring this up, it vastly simplifies the layout now of these icons. So if I wanted that star graphic over here, I could insert a new symbol. So we go into these symbols, we can find our new star, and we can just place it. And then if I need to adjust the color style, so we'll place it right here for this, and I'm on the light theme, then I just switch to the light theme. And then if I want this on the dark theme, then I can just drag a copy down with the Alt key, place it, and then switch the color to the, the dark theme. And now I have the, the star button on both of these UIs, and it's super slick. So <laughs> that's really cool. Um, if you have any questions about Sketch or the Xcode workflow, how we're doing this, I just submitted to the App Store, it got rejected. I'm probably going to have uh, another update on that. Uh, I think I have another video coming out on Friday, a little bit about it, and then I'll probably have a follow-up after that. We just need to fix some bugs, and uh, we'll be squared away. There's just some minor issues. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this, if this was helpful, click the thumbs up. This is really helpful with UI layout and design, especially if you're not very comfortable with Sketch. If you want a very specific sort of detailed step-by-step of this process, let me know, and maybe I'll create a separate video that's a little bit less scatterbrained, but I thought it would be useful to share something like this because this has been super helpful. All right, so I will see you in the next video. And the next video I'm gonna do is just gonna be on some IB uh, outlets and things that have changed in Swift 3 that have propagated to Swift 4. I've been getting questions on YouTube and on some of my videos about this for text change events. So if you're interested in that, I'll have that. And I'll also do a video on how to update to, to Swift 4 from a Swift 2 project, because that is not trivial and Xcode doesn't help you at all with sort of the built-in conversions. And it recommends downloading Xcode 8, which is a total mistake, unless maybe you've got a really big project. Um, I found that to be very clunky and not helpful. So I'm gonna show you my approach. So I'm gonna have two more videos that I'm gonna post shortly that will cover those topics. All right, I hope this was helpful. Again, click the like button if you enjoyed this, and then there's a subscribe button somewhere. Click on that to subscribe to my channel to get more updates. And let me know in the comments below on topics that you wanna learn more about, or if this was helpful, just write down there. I have a, a Trello that I'm trying to keep track of requests for new content. And um, 
I do have an auto layout course that I might be launching a, a smaller version of. So if you're interested in that, just let me know down below. All right, I'll catch you later.